uh, of combining unlike atoms that heretofore was not uh, possible under the natural state of covalent link-up. Uh, this led us to the development of the EPG electrical generator technology, uh, where we're able to magnify, uh, manufacture a magnetized gas that exists at room temperature and enhance the electromagnetic field without increasing mass. So our technology from since the time of the Arab embargo has been very far-reaching to give us a comprehensive energy source that we literally can use anywhere into the economies and move in a bilateral movement throughout the economies of the world uh, to bring an energy source in. And as I pointed out earlier, uh, the pending energy crisis that uh, will confront us very quickly, uh, we literally have the ability now of engineering, systems engineering it to mass production very, very quickly and hopefully be able to stem off uh, this imminent energy crisis that, that is now occurring. A lot of people are not uh, aware of that Kuwait produces or manufactures the majority of aviation fuel for the world, and it's anticipated uh, as pointed out earlier that uh, it's possible as much as 20 percent drop in aviation fuel uh, may occur within six to eight months. If that happens, then the domino dominoes effect will occur and will start to trigger uh, an, an energy, system, uh, energy shortage throughout the world. The same conditions that happen in the United States is also occurring in the air fields where the natural pressure in the existing uh, oil fields are dropping. Uh, the only difference between the U.S. and the air fields is their, their pressure is dropping three times faster than occurred in the United States. You just can't keep pulling the oil out of the ground and expect it's going to be there forever. The hourglass effect is occurring at a more f uh, faster rate now on nuclear power plants. China's opened the doors to Western technology. Twenty-five percent of the population of the world wants the same goods and services that you and I have been enjoying, and that, uh, the industrial base Cannot, uh, cannot be maintained or expanded without the supply and utilization of energy, of which we have very little fossil fuel left. So it's imperative that, that we develop the technology that we can move very quickly, and of course water was the answer to it, uh, because water is a very free and abundant energy source. And so this technology has led us to the abilities of harnessing and using the water uh, in this particular way, which we call the water fuel cell technology. stored in a gallon of water compared to a barrel of oil, for instance? Yes. Uh, as I pointed out earlier, when you separate the hydrogen and oxygen gases and go into the gas ignition process, uh, its energy uh, releases roughly two and a half times that of gasoline. Now note the reference is not two and a half times that of fingernail polish, it's two and a half times that of gasoline. But in the hydrogen fracturing technology, we have uh, developed the technology, as the Lord has shown me, that by igniting the hydrogen and oxygen gases and setting up a condition by which the uh, water molecule is prevented to form, then we now can tap into a very, very higher energy yield. And as a result of this, uh, the hydrogen fracturing technology shows that we can release energy up to beyond 2.5 million barrels of oil per gallon of water and do it safely. And uh, as I had shown you earlier, we are now preparing this technology uh, to be retrofitted directly to a jet commander, uh, which we plan not only to fly around the world nonstop uh, around the equator, but turn 90 degrees and go from the North and South Pole. So it's a tremendous amount of energy source. And what we've done is found a, w a triggering process to allow us to release this tremendous amount of energy and do it safely. So it gives us the ability n to not only uh, sustain and maintain the economies of the world, but also give us the abilities to uh, handle the environmental pollution problems at the same time. We can't keep putting CO2 in the air and expect that the energy level is going to be there even for our plants. And uh, we all talk about the greenhouse effect, but very few people come up with a viable answer to it. And the water fuel cell technology gives us the ability to get us. Tony, can you, can you explain the, your driving force behind spending all this money and energy developing something like this? It's, it's cost you about 10 years of your life. Can you explain why you're doing all this and what really drives you to keep Well, I, uh, I did an analysis during the Arab embargo uh, as to what actually occurred. I didn't pay any attention to the political leaders as to why we had an energy problem. And I realized that without a new free and abundant energy source to come into the world economy very quickly, then the world economy uh, could collapse. So uh, as a scientist, uh, I have a very diversified background from research development, product development, engineering, and corporate entrepreneuring. And when I realized uh, the problem that was confronting us, uh, I went into my office laboratory 
And as scientists, I had always uh, believed that there was an existence of God. It was uh, mathematically impossible that we had derived ourselves from swamp gas. If you got to have a lot of faith, you have to you have to have a lot of faith to believe in evolution. And so I went into my office laboratory and I said, God, I love my country. It's the greatest country in the world. If you'll help me put a power supply in the country, I'll do anything that uh, you want me to do. And subsequently, I was like Paul on the, on, uh, the road to Damascus. I didn't know the Lord, but once uh, he revealed himself to me, uh, subsequently I was filled with the Holy Spirit and I've been exercising the power and authority of the Word of God, uh, bringing this technology in. And many, many people ask me about, uh, uh, do I fear my life? I have learned uh, the power of angels and I have been protected in trying to bring this technology in. The ultimate objective is not only to stabilize the economies of the world, but uh, if we realize any funds from the technology, uh, it will go into world evangelization. You see, I, as a scientist, once truth is shown to me, truth is truth. And of course, I got what I wanted, a ticket to go into heaven. I got filled with the Holy Spirit. And so as a scientist, uh, truth is truth. And I have responsibility, just as I have responsibility to the water fuel cell technology to try to bring it out into the world. I also have the responsibilities to relate the truth to the Word of God, uh, not only to the guy, uh, to the next door neighbor or the guy down the block, but also relate that truth or that knowledge to uh, every person in the world if I possibly can do it. So the ultimate objective of the water fuel cell technology really is to help set the financial base of capable of evangelizing the world. Now this is, there's a difference between spiritual knowledge and worldly knowledge. And you can't go to the world system and ask them to help evangelize the world and spread the gospel. Uh, but you can go to the world system and give them a cheap uh, power supply that's so economically that will save them economically and then those funds will go into the world evangelization. So uh, the water fuel cell technology, really the ultimate objective is to accomplish the task of evangelizing the world uh, by giving the financial abilities to do so. And that's my, prime, that's my ultimate and prime objective. Uh, the water fuel cell will give us the abilities to do this. Well, uh, if you notice on my logo, you'll see Job 38, verse 22 and 23. And this is where the Lord is talking to Job, and he asks Job this question. He says, have you considered the treasures of snow, or have you considered the treasures of hell, which I have reserved against the time of trouble, against battle and war? Now, the interpretation of the scriptures are as follows. Is not snow the most beautiful part about water, that no one snowflake looks exactly the same as that of another? The treasures of snow is the characteristic and knowledge of water. The Lord knew that, in fact, that we would have and reach a very critical point in our history that since we won on the dependency of fossil fuels, that, that the flow of fossil fuels uh, may be disrupted. And as a result, the Lord specified that this knowledge of water would come out of time of great trouble. But he also specified that the knowledge would come out prior to two events. Okay, sir. Now that we've, uh, now that you've heard how the thing functions, you explained your background, why you are working on this thing. Uh, what do you think of possible applications? And where do you think this, this device can be applied in what scale and what's the amount of energy we can get out of it? Like you talked before about converting cars, uh, com commercial airplanes. Uh, is there any other application you think of? Oh yes, not only uh, is this technology applicable for all uh, modes of uh, transportation, uh, but it also has application in industrial processes. Uh, during the Urban embargo, I was called in a meeting in Columbus, Ohio with the industrial leaders, and Columbus Gas System informed us that our gas was being cut off 100%. Uh, what actually were telling us that we were going out of business. And I saw some of the most richest and most powerful industrial leaders of the state popping pills, and I thought they were going to have heart attacks. Because basically, without energy, you can't make a uh, product. If you can't make a product, you can't make profit. If you can't make profits, you cannot pay your bills. So the result, the bigger you are, the harder you fall, the faster that uh, you would go into economic uh, uh, bankruptcy. So it was imperative that this technology not only be uh, developed for the uh, transportation areas, but also to apply to industrial applications uh, to be able to give energy. Uh, the technology and the hydrogen fracturing technology that gave us the abilities to go in and to protect the military integrity of the Western world. So this technology is applicable not only in, in those areas, but uh, for example, um, during the Arab embargo, uh, our Navy task force uh, did not have the fuel. And so as we have the abilities now to go on the maritime applications, uh, literally run the ships off of water, 
uh, as a main fuel source and at the same time using the application is cleaning up our environment and pre uh, preventing from the COT and the contaminants uh, that go in the air. So we can move this technology bilateral on every aspect of the economy and do it very, very quickly. And so that, that led us, leads us now into the fact that we have been developing this technology uh, for mass production. And so once the, we finalize debugging of the pre-engineering unit, then we're going to translate it into a very cost-effective uh, system uh, by taking the technology into microchip technology and plastic mold injection technology allows us now to move this type of technology very quickly. Matter of fact, one master mold uh, set uh, can produce over 11,000 units every 24 hours. That gives us abilities now to move in a bilateral movement, but to get the energy source throughout the entire world quickly, uh, if, uh, if the oil is shut off uh, to us, either by war or by some other methods, um, a lot of people do not realize Sedan has the uh, viral germ through genetic restructuring that if he uses it, one, uh, uh, it lives off the bacteria of air and water and even of oil. And if he uses this, uh, it's possibly that the oil could be contaminated very quickly. And if that is so, then every country in the world would be faced of shutting off the flow of oil to each of their countries. Now, without the supply of fossil fuels, within 180 to 240 days thereafter, uh, about 1.5 billion people would be facing starvation very, very quickly. Uh, because we need that flow of energy in order to maintain the industrial bases of the world. So we've designed the technology to be very flexible to use every segment of the economy and do it very quickly. So we're all in the same boat. And what we're doing is illustrating that, yes, the technology is viable. Here we do have a viable technology that we now can use water as a fuel source because water is a, a very f uh, free and abundant uh, fuel source. But it's going to take you and I and the guy down the street and the people in each country to bring this technology uh, into the marketplace to stabilize our countries. And so as a result, we are uh, developed it uh, under the KISS method, keep it simple, stupid, to comply with the law of economics that the guy who comes up with the cheapest way is going to win out. So by decentralizing the mass production of the system and, and, the, and the fabrication of the system and decentralize the installation of the system, then we should be able to move in a bilateral movement throughout uh, all the countries of the world to get this type of technology into their countries to stabilize their, their economic base. Uh, if the oil is, is cut off by these means or it simply is being cut off by a lack of supply of oil that's now showing. Uh, it's the same natural pressure that dropped in the airfields as I pointed out a little earlier is also occurring in the North Sea. The North Sea uh, pressure has dropped by one third. So we all need the energy, and so therefore I feel that it's going to take the people of the world to come together and the leaders of, the, of the, each country to come together in one accord in order to allow this type of technology to go in to stabilize their economic basis in each, each respective country. Do you have any time scale for mass production set up yet? And second, do you have any organization or do you have planning an organization, international? Or? Yes, we are. I'm negotiating with many uh, leaders of different countries of the world. Uh, but the ultimate objective is to mobilize, uh, mobilize the masses of the people uh, in order to bring it in. This is the only way that, that, that can come in. And uh, so as we finalize our debugging of the system uh, and take it into mass production areas, we can do this by simply turning the technology over to many, many uh, fabricators and uh, people who have certain skills uh, in, in the machining areas or mass production areas that will allow this type of technology to be produced very quickly. Thanks very much for this interview. Oh, my pleasure. We appreciate it very much. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, I'll see, I'll, I'll yeah, see you red light. Focus, I'll just focus it on now. Okay, go ahead. Okay, Stanley, can you give us some idea about the size of a conversion kit for a car, for instance? Uh, we see this 